Tonight, we're taking a look at Reef, an abstract game about building a coral reef. All right, Reef was designed by Emerson Matsuchi and features art by Chris Quilliams. It was originally published in 2018 by a number of different publishers. My personal copy is from Next Move Games, which is a department of Plan B Games. Now, there is a second edition of this game that was published later back in... Uh, not too long ago, 2020, which features more contrast on the player boards and more colorblind friendly pieces. Uh, that was also put out by Next Move Games and Plan B Games. Now, the one we're reviewing tonight is the original printing, the first edition, but the rules and component quality are identical. All there are some changed colors. So everything that applies in this review should apply completely to the second edition of the now, this is, as I said, an abstract strategy game for two to four players, a full game taking, especially when you're learning the game, at least 30 minutes uh, to 45 minutes and possibly longer with more players. You pick up a copy of Reef for MSRP of $39.99, and it can also often be found on sale. For a look at the components in the original printing, be sure to check out our unboxing video on YouTube. Now, again, I do want to point out the only thing that actually changes between the first and second edition is the colors. So that's just do a quick Google on what the new colors look like and the unboxing should be still just as valid. Now, I got to say, I was impressed by this game opening this box. Now, I've seen the game online many times and I've seen people sharing about it. This isn't a new game, right? 2018. Um, and it just looked cool. I had... I was still shocked by the component quality of it. Like even seeing the pictures, I didn't realize how thick and chunky and tactile the reef pieces are in this game. Like they, uh, someone else pointed this out on Twitter and I have to agree. They look like toddler toys. Like they look like something your kids could play with. And to be honest, I probably would have gave this to my kids to play with when they were toddlers. Like this is the kind of thing you probably, it doesn't, they're too choking hazards and would be easy to clean if they Now, of course that's not, care about for the board game aspect but i thought the the pieces impressed me more than i expected with this are some well-designed cards and what i love about these cards is they're very simple there's two pieces a picture of two types of reef on the top and then there's a little scoring thing on the bottom and that's it they're very clear to read they're easy to read across the table now a bonus component wise was the box insert this is a a plastic molded insert that not only holds everything when stored but also works as a good storage solution a container holder at the table when you're playing uh for one you could re leave the reef bits into their four spots which works okay but i actually prefer to dump those out just put the extras back in the box because otherwise you got to find somewhere to put the extras you're not using but what i really like is their system for holding the money in the game which is a number of different denomination cardboard chips it's got a spot for each different denomination so it's really easy to grab what you want so i dig it because not only is this insert good for putting the game away it's actually useful during play so like uh toddler toys these bright fun shapes are the sort of things that your kids will want to put inside their mouth. Mm -hmm. now, Very fair. What is it we're doing with all these chunky pieces and cards? All right. So the theme of reef is you are building a very, uh, a variable. The word's coming out wrong. You are building a, a I want to say barrier reef, but there are other types of reefs. You are building a reef of coral. The game comes with four different colors of coral that are four different shapes. And you are physically going to stack these on top of each other to make a physical reef in front of you. The theme of the game is who can build the best reef. Uh, it is an abstract strategy game. That theme could have been anything else. But you know what? It works with the colors and the pieces. It, it's, it could be anything else you're building, but it does a reef. Uh, the the pieces are reminiscent of reef pieces. But again, I don't think the or specific types of coral or anything like that. Now, to start the game, you're going to take the player boards. You're going to find one with a starfish on it. You're going to grab additional boards for up to four players, flip them over, shuffle them, and hand them out to the players. You're then going to flip them back over. You're going to remove a number of coral from the game if playing with less than four players. When you're playing with four players, you play with everything, but if it's less players, you take out some of each color. You're then going to take one of each color of coral. So again, there's four different types, four different colors. You're gonna take three coins and two cards and you're gonna, gonna keep the cards to yourself. They're face down, don't face down to each player. And then you're gonna build the market in reef. And what you're gonna do is you are going to flip 
three face up cards put them in the center of the table and then put the deck next to that face up so that's something you don't see in many games and i gotta admit every time i play this game i put the deck face down first and then remember and flip it over now after looking at your cards players are going to place four coral on the board their board so the board is a four by four grid and you have one of each coral type you have to put it now the first few games you're going to put these in the middle four squares and that's meant to give you some starting patterns and make things easier but once everyone knows the game, you're now relegated to putting it on the outside edge only, which gives it makes it a little more difficult to get started. Right. And you can see what you might be able to collect since you've already put that market out there and what you might be able to score. So right from the very mm -hmm. start, you need to be planning for the future. Yes. Now, once everyone's ready, the player with the starship starship. I am messing up my words tonight. The player with the starfish starts the game. So there you go, Sean, a nice arbitrary start player system that doesn't reward someone for, you know, being young or older going swimming. Yep. Now each turn you do one thing. That's it. You either take a card from the market or you play a card from your hand. Now we'll start with taking cards. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at the market. So it includes the face up card on the top of the deck and three more and take one into your hand. Now, if you do take the top card of the deck, there is a penalty. You're going to have to pay one coin. That comes from your coins. This is why you start with three points in this game. Why you start with three coins is so that you can do that at the beginning of the game. This coin doesn't go back to the bank, but instead goes on the lowest cost card still in the market. No, you can collect any number of cards. There's no hand limit in this game. So this is your future. This what this card you're buying. You need to grab cards while keeping the scoring patterns you already have in your hand for future play in mind so mm -hmm. that you can maximize that scoring as you're going ahead and you're not going to end up stomping on your own plans. Yes. <laughs> so that is when we get to playing a card where you can mess up big time. So what you're going to do is take one of the cards that you either got at the start of the game or you drafted and you're going to place it face up in front of you. Now, every card shows two coral at the top of the card. Sometimes they're the same coral, sometimes they're different. The bottom of the card shows a scoring pattern. When you play, you're going to do both parts of the card. The first thing you do is to take coral. You do the top of the card first. It's simple. Take two of that coral and put them on your reef, put them on your board. Now, again, I mentioned the board's a four by four board. So when you place new coral, you can either put it in a blank spot or on top of your existing coral. Now, stacks of coral are limited to going a max of four high, so you do have an upper limit. Second, after you put your new pieces on, you're going to score your reef. You're going to score the bottom part of the card, and each card shows a different pattern. And what you're going to do is look down on your reef from the top, so all you see is the top coral, because that's all that matters. So the top coral on every stack sets the, the color, and then you're going to count how many unique times the pattern on the card can be seen in your reef where each piece of coral can only be used once. You're then going to multiply that. So the number of times the pattern shows up by the number on the card. And easy patterns are going to be worth like one points, whereas hard patterns are going to be worth like five points. Now, the different patterns include all kinds of different combos of coral. you got two of the same color side by side, two of the same color diagonal, three in a straight line, three diagonal, squares of four colors, L shapes, stacks at different heights, like for every coral you have at height two is going to score points or stacks of certain heights of certain colors so how many stacks of four that are red you have and so on there's a ton of different ones and the biggest learning curve in this game is learning these different patterns and showing them off which i just take the deck i flip it face down and i start throwing them out on the table and explaining how they work the most difficult one though like that that sounds complicated but the most difficult one is just based on the number of coral you have in one color next to your highest stack of another color so you're going to look at the card and it's going to say like I, I forget i even forget what the icon is for highest of green i think it's an up arrow and you'll have like up arrow green with red so you're going to find your highest stack of green and then count how many reds are around it that's the most complicated one and the one that i like to do a couple of examples in addition to be able to give examples myself the book itself the rule book which is like four pages long has a bunch of these examples of all the different pattern types so if you're having a problem visualizing it you can always look in the book and now one of the things only using each coral once is very different from the scoring in many similar types of games mm -hmm. so you can't just take you know i need to get an l shape of red and so i've got 
the center one is red and I've got an L here and an L here and an L here and an L here. You can't do that because they're all based off that same single one. And so you need to yes. plan to spread out your shapes rather than building off of a, a central and just sort of spiraling around in that way. And that, that that's uh, different than a lot of games like this mm -hmm. score. Yeah, most notably, actually, it's very different from Azul, which this is actually, this game is often considered the follow-up to Azul. It's a different designer, same publisher, and it's a similar style. So yes, Azul, you want to get that. And it uses what we call, I like to call Scrabble scoring, where you want to use the same letters more than once. Well, in this one, you cannot use reef tiles more than once or reef pieces. So the game continues back and forth or around the table, depending on the number of players, until the last chordal of one of the four colors is taken. You then finish the round, and the game ends. Players then get the one last chance to score the cards left in their hands, but you only get the count having the pattern once. So if you need have an L and you have two Ls on your board, you can just go, well, I have an L. So I get the, the single point. You don't get to do any multipliers. Then you add up everyone's coins, how many points they have, and whoever has the most wins. Another simple game with some complex emergent difficulty. And one of yes. the interesting things uh, about this one is you can really uh, hurt your opponent by dragging out the game. That yeah. the way the game ends matters in this one because if they think, you you know, the other player is expecting you to grab that and they think you're they're going to end the game so they make a play and you go in a completely different direction and... and, and keep the game going another round or two rounds you mm -hmm. have to put pieces out every turn you're playing a card so you could end up just burying something you were hoping to uh you know finish with yeah and that is important to note you have to do it right so the the top part of the card where you take two coral and place it is not an option you can't choose not to take it. every round you play a card you are putting new two new pieces of coral into your reef and Based on the counts and the cards, I don't think it's ever going to be possible to fill your reef. Like, I don't think you'll ever hit that limit. You might have a couple stacks that get to the four high, but there's just not enough of the pieces in there. And this is the main reason to remove some pieces when playing at different player counts, because otherwise the game will go on longer than it can handle. So overall, as Sean mentioned, this is one of those simple to learn games that's easy to teach and play. It's, it's a really simple game mechanically. This is the lightest of the next moon games, move games I've played. Like this includes favorites we've mentioned on our podcast numerous times, like the Azul series. This is, is lighter than those. This is, is, is simpler, quicker to teach. But don't let that lightness fool you. This is like that, that perfect mix of easy to learn but difficult to master. It's, it's exactly what I want from an abstract game. That is what I want from an abstract game when I pick one up. One of the first places you're going to notice this is the timing. Right, You always have to take and place Coral on your card before you score it, and that is so easy to forget. You get so excited about the scoring thing on the bottom of the card, and then you realize that by you got to place the Coral first, and when you place it first, you're screwing over the scoring you planned on. Or maybe you don't screw up this card, but you screw up your next card because you had planned three steps ahead and totally meant to make this huge pattern, but now you had to screw it up by you play the Coral on top of it. Yeah, it's it's very easy to stomp on your own plans yeah. um and it's it's trying to keep it all in mind like you can keep okay i want to score this and this and this and this that's easy to keep in your mind but to keep i want to score this and this and this and i have to play this and this and this and this mm -hmm. is that next level where your brain doesn't want to do that yes. um, your brain wants to keep track of one of those things you, you know i'm going to place this and this and this and, and build these things but to also keep track of all the different ones you want to score in their orders mm -hmm. your, your brain's going to struggle with that and, and, and smoke smoke will emerge yeah and like Sean, this, this, and this is a big part of it, right? A big part of Reef is strategy. You are planning ahead. And you're not just planning ahead what I'm going to do on my turn when it becomes my turn. This is much more like chess. Like if you're playing chess well, you are planning multiple turns ahead, uh, possibly all the way to the end game, though I don't think you can quite go that far in a game of Reef. But like if you're not planning two, three, four turns, if you're not planning, I'm going to score this, then I'm going to put these two out and score this, and then I'm going to put these two out and score that, you're not playing effectively you're going to want to play a number of cards in a row and combine them together to make multiple complete scoring patterns. But then there's the fact it's not a solitaire game, right? You're playing with an opponent and you're going to try to predict what cards they need. And like Azul and the other games in the series, you also have the ability to hate draft. Right? This is where you take a card that doesn't help you but hurts your opponent. Remember, your card limit's unlimited. 
Like, sure, you may play it eventually, but you might just take that card and hold on to it. So if you remember what cards your opponent's taken, because you it's all public info, everything's face up, right? You might be able to see what they're planning to do. Like, oh, wait, I know two turns ago, he took a thing with two red. And now he's taking a thing that's for squares of red. And looking at his board, if he just gets two more red out there, he'll be able to make a third square. And that's a five point. Oh, that's 15 points. You know what? I am going to draft every card with the red coral on it until he somehow messes up his pattern. That is totally legit. And another great thing that I like about this that is better than chess is the fact that messing that up doesn't ruin the game. So Sean's got his pattern of four and four. And if he gets this card, he's going to put the last one down and score 15 points. Oh, Mo took all the red. Well, you know what? I've got this and this instead. So we're going to work this way. And that'll at least get me 12 points. Like there's always options. You never get dead ended. You're, you're never completely messed up by the other player taking something you wanted or needed. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's the other, the other issue about this is trying to keep the patterns on your board already uh, and, and planning because it's all 2D, right? So everything you're doing is if you're looking straight down. Yes. But while you're playing the game, while you're sitting there, you're not looking straight down at it. <laughs> you're looking at a three-dimensional shape. And you're look, you're seeing those colors underneath that mm -hmm. don't matter. The height matters, but the fact that there's a yellow underneath your red doesn't matter at all. The fact that the red is three high matters. And I think that's a very deliberate move in this game. I think they they have very deliberately planned to make it more difficult by letting you look at it. Uh, because mm -hmm. if it was just, you know, if a piece turned gray when you put another piece on top of it, it would be a very different game because it would be easier to keep track of that pattern and not accidentally think about the color underneath something. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I think that would ruin replaying digitally, which I don't know if there's actually a digital version out there. If there is, someone let us know. Um, I, I don't know if there is, but I, if I designed it digitally, I'd want to just do the top down. Like right. just in my head, I would think I just want to display the top Where down. Where you really need the tabletop. And I think you simulator. do. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I really do think you do. Um, so the other thing with uh, the game becoming tactical, right? So you have that long-term strategy, but then all of a sudden someone does something you weren't expecting. So now you have to respond tactically. You have to look at what you have in hand and make a decision on how to move forward, right? Well, one of the problems with planning ahead is that market. And this leads me to mention player count because that chess-like feel I mentioned is really only really present when playing with only two players because the market doesn't change. Once, well, it might change by one card only. Once you throw in four players, by the time it gets back to your turn, that market could be completely different. Literally three of the four cards could have been bought by other players. So having any form of multiple turn strategy becomes much harder. Now, I would go so far as to say that the actual weight of the game changes based on the number of players, where the weight and complexity of the game is higher with a lower player count because there's more you can plan ahead, whereas it's less with more players which it could be a good or a bad thing. That, that's you and your group and how much weight and complexity you like. Now, for me, if it's game night and I am sitting down to play some games, I think I'm going to want to play Reef 2 player. I want to want to sit down and have that mental duel against another player and try to predict what they're going to do and try to draft the cards they want while still scoring the most. But if I'm at a casual game night, perhaps one, say, at one of the local bars with some adult beverages involved, I'm going to want four people and just kind of half pay attention and put my reefs out and draft what's available and chat in between my turns and play completely tactically. Yeah, I, I think it scales really nicely in that way because of that fact that you don't have to concentrate as deeply in a larger mm -hmm. group. It allows you to just chat and have fun and, and not, you know, play four players ignoring each other and sitting quietly staring at a board. Yeah, exactly. And I actually think this is a feature of the game. Like the, the fact that it handles both. That if you want to play a, a more strategic tactical game, you play it two players. If you just want to have some fun and put make some stacks and beautiful looking reefs, you play with four. Overall, I was extremely impressed with this game. Um, this is, a, again, we are not about the new hotness here. We're talking about a game from 2018, right? And as soon as this was announced, I really wanted to check it out. This, this was announced as the unofficial follow-up to Azul. Again, same publisher, different, different designer, but there's definitely some similarities. And I am so glad I got this for my birthday this year. And I finally got to check it out. I really dig this game. Well, it's super light. Like, I, I don't know what the weight rating on Board Game Geek is. And I don't know if the people who rated it, how much they took into consideration that the ability to plan ahead. But like the mechanics, like I said, it's like four pages of rules. It's really simple 
with the, the the basics of learning the game but there's surprising depth here if you choose to take advantage of it, if you choose to plan ahead and watch what your opponents are doing and potentially hate draft this is a game that's simple enough that my youngest daughter picked this up immediately like just she just got it but it's deep enough that deanna the heavy gamer in our family is also happy to play it Though I'll admit she'd rather play something with a bit more meat to it, like Azul, but she I, she can be convinced to play. Now, what I'm really looking forward to is getting this game, getting Reef, out in public, to public play events at our local game stores, our local cafes. I think this is going to be a great gateway game for new gamers, as well as a good icebreaker game, right? The beginning of the night when people are just showing up and just sit down and play a couple games of Azul, or sorry, uh, Reef and get to know each other. And I also think it's going to be a good filler game to play while waiting for other tables to wrap up their games. Plus it has that bonus of the table presence. This is one of those games where people are going to come over, whoa, what's that? Yeah, no, absolutely. And so this is a weight of 1.83 right now wow, on Board low. Game Geek. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's sitting in a nice uh, rating of 7. And what's really interesting is, is a lot of the comments are, are people who are surprised by this game. They weren't expecting it to be as captivating as it was. Uh, and some interesting points out that, oh, I, th I thought I was uh, immune to AP until I played this game. Uh, <laughs> there really is the potential that if you want to want to think at it you can really get lost in thought and planning uh so you'll know, beware if you are just sitting down to play this as a as a time filler before the other big games start up again uh just be aware you may find yourself forgetting about the other game you were going to play as you try just one more game of reef until the store is trying to close on you yeah this one definitely has a let's play again feel i definitely got that um there's definitely Sorry, I lost my train of thought. I glanced at the chat, bad me. <laughs> um, one of the things that... No, I'm off. I completely... We, we may have it have an edit if you want to note the time because I don't even know. No, I can see where I am in the notes. It was something I was going to mention based on what you said, but then you, like, before you said the just beware part, but then you went on to that, so I didn't get to get in in between, and now I can't remember what it was. AP. I think I would know what it was. Uh, the, the, how, how can someone on Board Game Geek say, I've never had AP before but until playing this game, but it's rated less than two weight? Like those two to me don't go together. I think that's people not realizing how much depth's in this game. Yeah. I think that's what I, what I was thinking about at the time. I was like, how can it be that low when people are having AP problems? Like the AP problems aren't weight 1.83 rated <laughs> games to me. Right. Anyway, moving on. If you like abstract strategy games at all, just pick up Reef. Pick it up at some point. It's uh, They're on a second printing. It's easy to find right now. Don't wait three years like I did. This is a very solid, thinky filler abstract. It's great for new gamers and experienced players. If you're looking for a game with great table presence to draw in a crowd, I think Reef is a good choice for this once we actually want to draw crowds to our tables again. If you found Azul to be a bit heavier than you wanted, but we're interested in something similar. Reef is a good choice there too. Now, if you are looking for a heavy game in any way, this is not that. Like we just said, less than a two weight on Board Game Geek. If you hate abstract games with pasted on themes, again, probably not for you. Though I do kind of want to suggest you give it a try. Because as we just noted in some of the Board Game Geek comments, many people, myself included, were surprised at the depth that is in this game. It might be worth giving a shot. All right, well, when you've got a chance, be sure to also check out our written review of Reef over at tabletopbellhop.com. 